Former Barcelona man Xavi Hernandez is widely considered one of the best midfielders of all time. In his heyday with both Spain and Barcelona, Xavi formed one of the best midfield triads the game has ever seen alongside Andres Iniesta and Sergio Busquets. He won 25 major trophies with Barcelona, 3 for Spain, before moving to Qatar ahead of the 2015-16 season. He then went on to finish his career in style within the Qatar league in his final season at the club in the 2018-19 season. The very next season he was named manager of the squad and soon afterwards completely revolutionised Al Saad into a near stoppable unit in the Qatar Premier League. The Spanish midfielder has quietly gone about his business at El Sad, playing in Guardiola-esque ways and doing Del Bosco-esque things, winning six trophies in two seasons so far. Barcelona are keeping a close eye on the now 41-year-old and in time, we may see one of the game's greatest midfielders become one of the game's greatest ever managers. Here is a tactical analysis of Xavi Hernandez Al Sad side and we also have the football manager replication. So now let's get stuck into things. To examine any team, we must first begin with their style of play. Tiki Taka is often associated with a 4-3-3 formation, but Xavi and Al Sad swap between a 4-2-3-1 and a 3-4-3 formation instead. Regardless of which one they pick on a match-to-match -match basis, the reliance of two central midfielders to orchestrate attacks remains ever-present. In Xavi's first season in charge, those two players were the solid South Korean Wu Young Jung and the former Atletico Madrid captain and legend Gabi Fernandez. Gabi's retirement from the game sparked a new familiar face to the Tiki Taka and Spanish football to enter the fold, Santi Cazorla. The former Arsenal and Villarreal man is now the face of Al Sad and the orchestrator behind practically everything they do in attack. With 13 goals so far in the league, his highest ever goal return in the league campaign, Santi is showing that he still has what it takes at 36 years old. Alongside Cazula, Xavi also has another recognisable name in the Brazilian midfielder, Gil Hermi. An exceptional passer and progressor of the ball, the 30-year-old is taking everything he learned from his days with Olympiacos, Udinese and Deportivo to boss games in Qatar's top flight. With Cazula not being the most mobile runner, it is important that El Sad keep all of the possession in the match and that the 36-year-old is surrounded by others who can recover well in transition, like the Brazilian. Xavi can also get around that defensive concern by pushing Cazula further forward, where he's also played both on the left and as a number 10. In the 3-4-3, Cazula is sometimes deployed as the striker and he has two mobile runners alongside him to create greater havoc up front. When this happens, Xavi will often play one of the two South Korean midfielders, either Wu Young Jun or Nam Tae Hae, alongside Jilerme. With all this said, with a manager like Xavi at the helm, the system becomes less important than the specific roles that each player has when they step foot onto the pitch. So let's begin to examine some of those roles in greater detail. As you might expect of Xavi in a managerial role, Alsa play out from the back with a meticulous build-up, focused on keeping possession through short and quick passes. The team have kept over 60% of the possession in Xavi's two seasons at the club so far and they are beginning to resemble something of Spain's Tiki Taka glory days without really having any other star stubbed players to match. The key to this Tiki Taka approach is that whenever a player makes a pass, they are instantly on the move to receive another. Tiki Taka's developed a reputation for being redundant and it could be argued that Xavi's team overdo it at times. Sometimes two players make several one-touch passes back and forth between each other, trying to free up a third man, but overdo it by three or four too many passes. That is, the third man is usually available far earlier than they actually find them. Nonetheless, with so many one-touch combinations, Xavi's side are quietly making Tiki Taka come back to life in a really fun way. In the initial build-up phases, Alsa's fullbacks remain very low on the pitch. The back four arc themselves in a pentagon-like shape, with the fullbacks only slightly higher than the centre-backs. They are important to the build-up in stretching the width of the field and often remaining lower than defensive midfielders or central midfielders. Although the fullbacks are important to these initial build-up phases, it is the centre-backs who have the most crucial role, looking to switch play left to right or combine vertically with their central midfielders. 
The central midfielders will often operate in close proximity to one another and will remain in the middle of the pitch as the two wingers retain their width. The attacking midfielder will look for space to receive the ball in between the lines of the opposition as the striker stays high. There are a few key differences to Alsace's build-up between their two formations. In the 3-4-3, the wingers are far more likely to invert and drop deep to pick up possession. If they do stay high and allow a false 9 like Kozula to drop deep instead, they still remain central in that higher position. In the 4-2-3-1, they are far more likely to retain their width and stretch the field. The striker is also less likely to drop deep in the 4-2-3-1. With an attacking midfielder already in the team, that would become more redundant. But regardless of the formation, the key is to create one-touch passing sequences to unlock the defence and to maintain the width, stretching the field and exposing a high press through switches of play. Then, when Alsad advance higher up the pitch, the width and the same principles of one-touch remain. While Xavi's team may sometimes be patient in breaking the opposition down, they take a drastically different approach in the attacking transitions or when they work the ball into the central areas. That is, it becomes an awful lot faster. And the one-touch combinations return. The striker will often play with their back towards the goal and so too with the inverted wingers in the 3-4-3. They will operate in close proximity and this allows for one-touch layoffs in and around the box to expose and unlock the opposition. As already noticed, this mentality is also prominent in the build-up but is particularly impressive in attack as it makes Al Sad so exciting to watch further forward. They're incredibly elegant in the final third, creating many chances through incisive through ball passes, but it's not snail-like elegance, it's rather a high-paced heavy metal one. Al Sad's attackers don't just make smart layoffs and hold their position, instead, they lay it off and sprint in behind for a shot at goal constantly opening up the defence and creating more space for others to roam. These moves are often started by a powerful run dribbling the ball infield at a high speed, before laying it off to another player, who will in one touch through ball pass, look to set that same player or a third man runner free on goal. They also tend to do these combinations with a bit of flair and excitement with back kills and elaborate flicks. The quickness of these combinations combined with the added flair makes outside very easy on the eye but also very difficult to stop. Throughout their attacking phases, Alsad look to maintain their whip. In the 3-4-3 formation, that whip comes from the wingbacks as the wingers invert in a 3-2-5. In a 4-2-3-1, both wingers and fullbacks may occupy the same space at once, contrary to a Guardiola team that forbids any winger and fullback to operate in the same vertical channel. Further, while the fullbacks may retain relatively low in the build-up, they frequently gallop forward to join the attacks higher up the pitch and create wide overloads. While some 4-2-3-1 teams play very narrow in attack and invert their wingers, Xavi's stay wide. Overlapping runs from the fullbacks around the wingers are a frequent occurrence, even if the winger remains wide themselves. Obviously, the wide players will cut inside on the ball and look to open space for the fullback to advance out wide instead. But Al Sad's approach of actually maintaining their whip through both players is a bit of a novel by today's standards. It's actually the way teams like Barcelona and Spain would have played back in Xavi's time as a player. But something that most clubs move away from nowadays to try and create more overloads in central areas through the use of inverted wingers or inverted fullbacks. In this regard, Xavi's Al Sad will probably make a better comparison to Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool with their use of fullbacks and wingers, both operating in similar spaces than Pep City. In the 3 4 3, the shape becomes more similar to a 3 2 5. The wingers are far more likely to invert. Suddenly, now, they are looking more like a Thomas Tuchel's Chelsea side instead. But even in the 3 4 3, the wingers are constantly looking for space in wide areas too, particularly trying to exploit the gap between the fullback and the centre back. They make darting movements into these spaces whenever the outside centre backs or wing backs have the ball. In addition to these overloads and overlaps, Alsa's whip is a great mechanism for them to keep possession and switch play. Keeping in mind that Xavi's team don't tend to make longer passes, these switches are often done through first going backwards or sideways to a central midfielder or centre backs to hit diagonals, instead of switching from one side to another. Then if the team loses possession, the central midfielders remain well possessioned to stop attacks from progressing despite the open shape from their teammates. 
Outside failed to win the league in their first season under Xavi and their recovery pace in transition was a key issue. He's cleaned that up this season, particularly in the 3-4-3, which allows a third defender to always be ready to help steer the team out of danger. So with that, let's talk about their pressing. Alsad pressed from the very front of their attack, utilising a ball-orientated press. This means that, rather than each player having a specific opposite number to track, Alsad's players are pressed based on whoever is closest to the ball in that given moment, as the other players nearby cover the necessary space and passing options around the ball. Despite the press being quite high, the central midfielders are rarely engaged as part of their initial press in the opposition's half. The front four do the bulk of the work instead, maintaining a fairly rigid 4-2-3-1 shape. In the 3-4-3, the front three again have the most weight on their shoulders in leading the press, with the wingbacks and central midfielders acting as the second line of support. Lower on the pitch, the 3-4-3 may become something of a 5-4-1, with the 4-2-3 staying relatively consistent by comparison. Xavi's side set up to keep the ball and the defensive roles that cost them the league last season have been sorted out this time around. If they do concede a goal, it is usually out of failure to adequately recover in transition or from ineffective passing. But with only 14 goals conceded in 22 matches this season, it's easy to see why Al Sadd ran away with the league. As if the 77 goals they scored during that time isn't oppressive enough, they simply don't look like they're going to concede because they keep so much of the ball and generally cover well to stop attacks from happening when they lose it. To conclude, Xavi Hernandez may not be managing a team in Europe's top 5 leagues, but he's doing very interesting work at El Sad, bringing Tiki Taka back to life. His teams attack with loads of width and ferocity, and keep so much of the ball that they don't have to do that much defending. With their impressive record of 19 wins from 22 games this season, Xavi has taken El Sad to unbeatable heights. This should catch attention of the likes of Barcelona and Spain moving forward, but for now, Qatari football fans can be very happy that they have a true tactical mastermind in their league. So that there is a tactical analysis wrapped up by myself, we are now going to go into Football Manager to check out the replication, so now, let's head over to Football Manager. So here we are in Football Manager, RDF's Xavi Hernandez recreation and we actually have two tactics, well of course we do, we couldn't be bragging about the 4-2-3-1 and the 3-4-3 without actually trying to replicate both of those formations, so here we have the 4-2-3-1 and we also have the 3-4-3 but this video is going to be a little bit different, we are going to try and cut the Football Manager content just a slight because as I noticed most of you do not watch the results part of this video. So we're going to try and keep that bit short and simple and now we're going to go through both tactics. So in goal we have the sweeper keeper under attack duty, both fullbacks are fullbacks under support duty, they're instructed to cross from the byline and also close down more. In central defence we have two central defenders both under defend duty, the reason why I didn't use ball playing defenders is because they like to take more risk a lot more often than central defenders and they like to play counter attacking balls whereas central defenders may keep possession just a little bit better. In defensive midfield we have a double pivot, two playmakers actually, a deep line playmaker, he's instructed to pass it shorter, dribble less and close down more whilst his duty is on the support duty and his partner is a roaming playmaker, he's instructed to pass it shorter also, dribble less and close down more. On the flanks we have an inside forward on support, he's instructed to roam from position and stay wider and on the right we have an inverted winger on the attack duty, he's instructed to roam from position and stay wider also. In attacking midfield we have an advanced playmaker on the attack duty, he's instructed to pass it shorter and run from position also and then up top lastly we have our complete forward on the support duty. In the 3-4-3 because the team instructions are basically the exact same, well not basically they are the exact same, so in the 3-4-3 we do have the super keeper as well and the two central defenders but in between them we do now have our ball playing defender. As we are now a midfielder light I felt that we needed a central defender that can bring the ball out and also be a ball progressor. So that's the reason why I went with the ball playing defender on the cover duty and on the flanks now and on the flanks now we have wing backs on the support duty but they have no added instructions. The central midfield remains the same, 
the attacking midfielder on the right remains the same but on the left we have another inverted winger on the attack duty he's instructed to roam from position and stay wider up top we now have a false nine instead of the complete forward and the false nine is instructed to roam from his position so for the team instructions the mentality we are using the positive mentality the attacking width is set to fairly wide not wide because then I noticed that a lot of our attacks started to happen out wide and then we started to send in a number of crosses which I didn't want to happen so I felt that fairly wide gave us a better balance for the approach play we are overlapping on the left and overlapping on the right as the two fullbacks do not have get further forward in their instructions we are going to be playing out from the defense the passing directness is set to march shorter the tempo is set to slightly higher now you may be wondering why I'm not using work the ball into the box but work the ball into the box actually killed a lot of our attacks. I noticed that work ball into the box can actually slow down your attacks and that is something that we don't want to achieve. We want to keep our one touch combination passes throughout the whole team so I remove work the ball into the box only for that reason. In transition when the possession has been lost we are going to counter press to try and win the ball back as soon as possible but when the possession has been won we have no instruction when the goalkeeper is in possession he is going to distribute it quickly and he's going to distribute it to the center backs out of possession now we do have a higher defense line a higher line of engagement no offside trap but we are defending narrowly forcing the opposition out wide for the pressing intensity we are using extremely urgent we are preventing the short goalkeeper distribution and get stuck in get in their face try and win the ball back now this instruction isn't there to replicate but only to get better football manager results without this there's a huge difference and believe me even though we're not staying on our feet i noticed that our players did stand off quite a bit but that there is the tactical instructions and we are now going to go into the results so for the competitions barcelona were the champions we won the league we played 38 we won 33 we drew two and lost three with a points tally of 101 in the champions league we got knocked out in the first round by chelsea where we performed awful well we done very well in the first leg it's the second leg where we absolutely crumbled and in the super copa we got knocked out by Real sociedad but in all truthness i didn't really care about these two trophies it was the champions league that i went for Funny enough, we got knocked out by Chelsea in the first knockout round. For the team statistics, Barcelona, we scored the most goals, 97. We had the highest points per game. We also had the best pass completion ratio, 91%, whilst also having the most possession, 60% of the ball. We had the most clean sheets and we conceded the fewest in the league also. When it comes to passes completed, you can see how much Barcelona was on the ball. 21,287 passes completed throughout the season, way ahead of the team that came in second. For the player statistics, we can see that Messi, top goal scorer, Messi also most assists, Messi, most player of the match awards, best pass completion goes to our two centre-backs, Lengley and PK. And then the fuse conceded also goes to Mark andre to Stegen. He didn't get the most clean sheets though. He did come in third with that with only 18 clean sheets. Now looking at our attack and efficiency, you can see that we were aggressive and we were clinical. Looking at the general performances, we did outperform the average by far, which is expected when you are Barcelona. For our defensive efficiency, you can see that we were very quiet and impenetrable, which is a huge positive, absolutely huge positive. So when it comes to scoring our goals, most of our goals came from play shots, 12 came from penalties, 9 from powerful shots and 7 from headers. With the assist, 24 came from through balls, 18 came from crosses, 12 came from short passes, 3 came from corners, 9 came from free kicks and 4 came from the square ball we're now going to look at the squad statistics before closing the video if you're wondering about training i literally used the tactical preset of tiki taka the game provides those schedules i just used the preset and carried on so for the squad statistics messi had an absolutely outrageous season his average rating is on 7.95 i think that's incredibly harsh you're gonna be like rdf that's really good it is but look at his statistics, he scored 31 goals in 34 games and got 22 assists. So overall, he contributed on his own to 53 goals in 34 starts. Absolutely outrageous. Antonio Griezmann scored 21 goals in all competitions. Dembele scored 17 and Ansu Fati managed to score 13. For the assist, Messi got 22 assists, Piaznik got 11 and Frankie de Jong also got 10. 
Dembele got nine, Pedri got six, Coutinho got six, and those are the other players that are worth mentioning. Hopefully, Xavi does make his move to Barcelona in real life, but that there unfortunately wraps up this video. If you are enjoying this type of content, if you are new or you haven't yet, make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Make sure you leave a like and leave a comment if you have any recommendations of which tactic you would like to see next. My name is RDF, it's been a pleasure, I will see you soon, stay safe, see ya!